Derek again, the owner of the Rusty Rabbit. Now we're going to talk about Bosch fuel injection systems and their counterparts, the fuel injector themselves. This is the cold start injector that we talked about earlier. You'll notice it has the two electrical prongs and the pindle is recessed. Oh, can't really, there you go. pindle is recessed in there. You can't really see it that well. This is a mechanical fuel injector. Notice the absence of electronic connections. This pindle is mechanically operated to turn on under a certain amount of fuel pressure. Your Volkswagen product has four of these, one per each cylinder, and the fifth, the cold start injector, at the end of the intake manifold. What do fuel injectors exactly do? They spray fuel in, in a pattern, a beautiful pattern. Let me get a pen here, and I'll see here. Inside your engine as it operates, you're going to see a uh, beautiful pattern of fuel. You want your fuel to come out of your car in that pattern, a beautiful misted spray. What you're trying to do is called atomize the fuel. Atomizing simply means you're turning it into a mist like a fog on an early morning day. That way it has the highest burn ratio. Fuel in itself, gasoline, if you ever throw a cigarette in a gasoline bucket, and don't do that, it won't blow up, right? However, you take a match and you hold it near a gas can, the vapors will explode and possibly burn you half to death and take the house with you. That's why I say don't do that. Vaporization, atomization, is what causes fuel to really be explosive. As a liquid, it's not very good. So these injectors are supposed to do that. Now most Volkswagen products that you're going to be working on have been on the road for anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Some even longer than that if you're not working on rabbits. Now, the problem with that is that over those years, all that gas that has passed through those injectors has left deposits. And like engine compartments, which take uh, you know fuel deposits and turn them into carbon as they're burned, fuel passing through those injectors hasn't burned. It's just gummed up. It's called varnish. Any car that's sat for a few years, uh, most of the system will have varnish, gasoline varnish. And varnish is what happens as the octane ratio of the gas goes down, 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 to where you get that bad smelling gas, kind of like a lawnmower that sat over the winter. That varnish causes the injectors not to spray properly. So instead of spraying in that beautiful pattern and atomizing the fuel properly, you get more of a dribble. You get... Uh, like a shower head. A dribble instead of a spray. This causes major issues. The first of which is the lack of power. The car's not going to run at its peak performance if it's not operating with a good spray. Not getting complete combustion. Your plugs will foul out. You're liable to have a miss. One or more misses. You know, multiple misfire on a cylinder or a single cylinder. Usually injectors don't all go bad at once. You'll get one that goes bad You'll notice your car da -da 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 -da, won't run on all four. Got that hesitation to it. Car shudders when you accelerate. Usually after a certain RPM, when there's more fuel pressure being pumped to that sucker, it'll start firing properly. So you'll have plenty of power at your higher RPM band, but at idle, it'll rough idle, won't idle, uh, and, and that's, that's the issue. So injectors need to be cleaned or replaced every once in a while. To get them out of your car is a trick. If it's a new build, you've used new seals, no big issue. You pop that sucker out, you give it a good grasp behind that intake manifold, and you pop it out. Like so. I'll, I'll demonstrate for you. I've got the car right here. Of course, it's going to be hard to see exactly what I'm doing, but you want to reach in there, grab your injector firmly by the base, and just pull out on it. That's all there is to it. Out comes your injector with your seal. Oh, you kind of snake it out right there through it, and there you go. There's one right there. This black gasket here that goes around it, very inexpensive. Uh, I recommend you replace those. What they're doing is sealing it from air leaks. If you have an air leak, you're going to have all kinds of engine problems. That we'll get into in another segment. But there's your fuel injector. Let me go ahead and stick this back down in here. Now, like I said, that can be a real easy task if you've just done an engine rebuild or you have new gaskets in there. However, 
These rubber gaskets get extremely hard over the years, get deformed, and they actually mold to the bucket that sits inside of there. So when you try to pull your injector out, it just doesn't want to go. Do not pull too hard on that steel braided cable or you will rip that fuel line. And again, those are not available that I'm aware of. You'll have to get one off a junkyard car, which is also getting kind of hard to find. What you want to get it out though, uh, you can go down and buy, I think eBay, I see them come up every once in a while, probably your Snap-on, Mac tools, those kind of characters if you can chase them down, will have an official fuel injector puller, something that has a prong on it, gets in underneath there and, and has the right levers to pop that sucker out of there. Anyway, once you have your injector out, you have choices on how to clean that thing. You can drop it into a tank of heavy solvents, not the fifth injector, just your main fuel injectors try to clean it out that way. Another person on VW Vortex recommended that you take a brand new can of gum out or carburetor cleaner and inject it through that, through the base, through the tip. I'm not sure if that works or not, as a matter of fact, because I don't believe that it has enough fuel pressure to open the pindle up inside of this thing and get fuel to pass through. But you want to get is a good spray pattern. If you can't get a good spray pattern, if all you get out of this thing is dribble, then it's no good and you need to toss it and get yourself another one. These are available new. They cost about 30 something dollars a piece, depending on where you buy them. And they will make your car start better, run better, idle better, run better at higher speeds, and give you more power. So, if you're looking for a trade off as a reason to spend that 30 bucks, it will do that. So, how do you diagnose a fuel injector that's no good? You don't want to go ahead and replace all four of them, right? Now that you've got a car that just has a dead mist at idle or hesitation all the way up, to about 2500 RPM and the car evens out and runs on all four. Easy enough way to find out which injector is giving you trouble is drive the car with it like that for a day if you can run it. Get home, let it cool off, and pull out your spark plugs one at a time. When you get to the spark plug that has a different color or look to it than all the others, you found the one that has the bad plug. Now, most of them will be sooty or damp or, or just not, you can tell the difference on it. Now you pull those plugs out one at a time and you compare them. One won't be like the others. There's your bad injector. Pull it out, try to clean it, or replace it. Here's something I don't recommend. Fuel treatments. Injector cleaner that you put in your gas tank, useless. Stuff is, uh, you know, I don't know what it's made for, but it's made for people that want to part way with their cash in a hurry and don't really want to fix their car. So skip that stuff and either clean it or replace it. Like I said, about 30, 30 bucks, uh, give or take, at your local dealership or, or parts store. Your fifth injector you can't deep clean. So if you've got a problem with this fifth electrical injector, and you determine that the rest of your system is operational, you've got to replace it. The IO2 are still available, although I don't know what the price is. Anyway, that concludes the CIS fuel injection system. Uh, I believe we've covered bases, haven't we? We've covered the fuel injectors, control pressure regulator, the cold start system, and the fuel distributor. Take it from me, Eric, owner of the Rusty Rabbit. You can do this. You really can. This is not a mystificated car, man. This stuff is, you know, you can get to the bottom of this if you really want to. Anyway, next, we're going to do something that's not really part of the fuel injection system. It's drivability problems caused by something that fuel interacts with, air. Vacuum leaks can cause the exact same sets of problems that we've described here during your fuel system, except vacuum leaks are a little more difficult to find. A simple one will make a large noise. A not so simple one could be a little hard to, dip, to dig out. But join me in the next part of the series, Vacuum and Vacuum Leaks, and we'll get into diagnosing your car problems if you have a bad brake booster, an intake gasket, injector seals, vacuum lines that are cracked or broken, uh, vacuum reservoir that's no good, a variety of things. Anyway, I'm glad you decided to take a class on Bosch CIS systems, and I hope that it was of help. Feel free to drop me a line at therustyrabbit.com. Let me know how it worked. Take care.